Well, good evening and welcome to Morris Hill Church of Christ Online. We are happy to be back with you tonight. Matt, how are you doing tonight? Doing well. I'm glad that we're able to study together and, and share uh, some time together and share with our, our congregation, anybody else out there that's tuning in with us. Good. Glad you are with us. Of course, we're uh, doing this via Zoom, uh, still being sick a little bit. Um, um, we're trying to stay quarantined. We will have our days in by Sunday and hopefully be back with everybody at the church uh, building for our drive-up service at 930. Uh, if you're in the area, you can make it to that. We'd love to have you there. We will, good Lord willing, be uh, streaming at 930 on uh, our YouTube and Facebook channels. But as uh, per usual, we want to begin with our prayer list. Uh, we're constantly remember the Sparkmans and Betty and Ed, uh, Margaret and Marks, the Roberts. Uh, again, remember Gail uh, coming up uh, early January the 4th. She will be uh, going undergoing some stem cell treatment and we're hoping that, that goes well for her. Cornelia Ragster is uh, at, at Jane's house and is trying to get better. Uh, Edith Broadfoot uh, recovering from COVID. David Sr. recovering from COVID. Uh, Chuck Barrett, uh, Joan, and Betty recovering from COVID. Uh, Dale Givens uh, has a, a light case of COVID and uh, he's at home recovering. Uh, Janice and I are recovering. Today's probably been uh, the best day uh, since we tested, uh, but we are doing better. Uh, Richard Taylor is at home recovering from his uh, car accident and doing well. Hubert Powell reports that he's doing better. Uh, we are remembering Jean Smith and her family at this time, and also uh, we will mention again uh, Jane Scott and the passing of Van. Um, Tim Malden, this is the son-in-law of Philip and Debbie May. He's battling COVID. I uh, did read on Facebook where he had a good day yesterday, so we hope that he will continue uh, to improve. Janice Cox is the daughter-in-law of Otis and Doc Cox. Uh, she's very ill uh, in South Carolina. Uh, we're praying for her. We got a call just a little while ago from Robert Folks that his brother-in-law, Dwight Stoltz, passed away. So we're praying uh, for them at this time. A lot of sickness, a lot of uh, folks who are uh, hurting in some way or another um, right now. So uh, we want to be mindful of them. We'll ask Matt if you would get ready to say a prayer for those folks. Um, if at all possible, you know, send these folks a call or a card or a note. Um, uh, it means a whole lot when you have people who care for you checking up on you. And so uh, let's uh, not remember, uh, let's not forget to remember uh, these good folks. Matt, if you would, we'll begin with a prayer. Let's, let's uh, pray together. Uh, God, we're grateful for the ability to be together uh, tonight, and we pray a blessing over those that were mentioned, uh, those that uh, are battling corona, and that you will be with them and bless them, give them health uh, soon, and especially the, the fatigue and the weariness that comes with that. We pray for <clears throat> strength for these, um, and that you will uh, help them to feel uh, back to their normal selves as soon as they can. God, we're mindful of our country and the world around us that the pandemic that we're in and we pray your blessing over that special measure on those that are feeling uh <coughs> problems with anxiety and and things of that nature that you will be with them and comfort them god we pray for our congregation and especially for our loved ones that are sick and undergoing treatments and have tests and, and different things <clears throat> that they are dealing with and continue to struggle with that you will be with them. Of course, we pray for the, the Scott family and for Miss Jane that you will be with them, comfort them and their loss in this trying times and the, the Folk family as well. God, we pray for our study tonight as we open up your word and look at it, look at gifts that we can give others and how, how these gifts can be a blessing to others. We pray a blessing over this study continue to um, ask uh, your your grace and your mercy over us, God, over this new year as we begin it, uh, that you will reign in our lives and that we will put you first in, in all, all that we do. We thank you for the safety that you provided us. Continue to watch over us. We pray and ask these things in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. 
Well, Mr. Matt, what's what's new you know, with you and your family? Okay. Um, well, uh, the the Burgess family, uh, we are um, just taking it taking it easy. You will not be uh, seeing us this coming Sunday. We've uh, unfortunately through uh, contact tracing have been exposed, and so we will be um, remaining uh, here at the Burgess house uh, for the next. A uh, week and a half or so, um, so we won't be able to worship with everybody this Sunday, um, but we will be uh, online and uh, be praying and, and singing with you guys uh, from from our home, as many of you have had to do, and so just uh, keep that, keep us in your prayers uh, as we're probably see us out in the yard um, as you drive by, just honk the horn and wave at us, that'll be exciting, uh, but do want to... Uh, just let everybody know that we'll miss you all on Sunday, but be back with you the, the following Sunday um, for that. And so uh, keep us in your prayers with that, especially over the next few days as we'll be probably inside with some uh, rainy weather coming in and um, just 2020, that's how it's going to end. We we'll sure hope y'all can escape it when uh, whoever's sick gets better. Uh, yes. Thank you. Yeah. Well, Matt, you look good, buddy. I, I appreciate you so much for all that you do and your family and um, what y'all have brought to us at Mars Hill. Um, that's kind of what we want to talk about tonight. Uh, the gift of a sincere compliment. Um, we've been talking the last couple of weeks about things that we can give that do not cost us a penny, do not cost us one cent. Hey, by the way, Matt, I love your mantle. Uh, hat. Yours too. It looks um, great. Um, decorated so nicely. Why don't you tell everybody a little bit about that and how we have the exact same band? Well, how about we just see who's actually watching tonight and they can call one of us and ask us how we have the same mantle. <laughs> they can, they can figure out how we're both quarantined, um, but look like we're in the same place. Yeah, we are in different places, but wow, that's pretty impressive. Um, <laughs> A sincere compliment. I, there are some folks who are very good at giving compliments. There's some folks that yes. aren't very good at giving compliments. And I think the difference in those people are the sincerity behind what they say. Uh, I know in Proverbs 12, there's uh, all kinds of gifts listed there. And I, and I think the gift of encouragement, this can go along with um, a sincere compliment. Uh, let's let's talk a little bit about that, Matt. You are um, one of the best at giving compliments. I hope they're sincere. Uh, what kind of uh, mindset or attitude comes behind giving uh, sincere mm -hmm. compliments? Well, of, of course that is. So uh, you had mentioned Proverbs twelve, Proverbs twelve twenty five. Anxiety in a man's heart weighs him down. Uh, I think all of us can agree with that, um, and that was even, I mentioned that in uh, my prayer earlier with just uh, troubles uh, have brought anxiety uh, to many people's lives uh, this year. The rest of the verse, again, it says anxiety or worry, it, it weighs a person down. That's what that says. But the next part of the verse says, an encouraging word makes him glad. Mm -hmm or an encouraging word cheers him up. Yes. And so uh, it's, it goes back to the golden deed. You know, it's, it's always that treat others how you want to be treated. Um, Chris, I, I, I love Marcel. I love the congregation. I don't say it enough, but everyone is so appreciative. And to me, that's where a compliment is paid. When you appreciate someone, you compliment that right. um, for, for whatever reason it is. And, uh, and I'm sorry if I don't compliment enough, but uh, that we have such an awesome congregation, a loving congregation, uh, a, a hardworking congregation, even in the midst of a pandemic. Um, you just look at kind of what all goes into um, our Sunday service with different, uh, different people involved in different ways, um, keeping everyone safe, um, directing traffic and passing out communion, just different things like that. And uh, we appreciate that. Uh, and, mm -hmm. and Chris, the the elders they show uh, they show their appreciation and and all the members constantly show their appreciation to us as ministers there uh, and so you know if it makes you feel good help others as well and and then that's the purpose it's not about receiving a compliment it's it's about the encouragement that comes 
uh, with each compliment. It's about it's about the 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 feel of appreciation. You know that you're appreciated uh, when others do that. Let's talk about some specifics. What are some specifics in Scripture that we can go to um, that shows scripturally how a compliment works and and, and some benefits yes. uh, oh. with that, Matt? So we'll start with the example of Jesus. And if you want to open your Bibles up, since we're in Bible study, um, let's let's look at Jesus and some compliments that he paid. That's an awesome example. Who better to start with? Matthew chapter 8. Let's look at that. So um, we're familiar probably a half dozen times, um, if not a dozen times. You see uh, Jesus complimenting people's faith, people mm -hmm. that he has healed and he compliments them for their faith and uh just think about your faith has made you whole and, and things like that and this is one of those many examples um in matthew chapter 8 the faith of a centurion uh starting matthew 8 verse 5 when he entered capernaum a centurion came forward to him appealing to him lord my servant is lying paralyzed at home suffering <coughs> terribly and he said to him i will come and heal him but the centurion replied lord i'm not worthy to have you come under my roof, uh, but only say the word and my servant will be healed. For I too am a man under authority and soldiers under me, and I say go and he goes, and to another come and he comes, and to my servant do this and he does it. When Jesus heard this, he marveled and said to those followed by him, Truly I tell you, with no one in Israel have I found such faith. I tell you, many will come from east and west, Recline at table with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. While the sons of the kingdom will be thrown into the outer darkness, in that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And then here we see in verse 13, he's already talked about his faith. And to the centurion, Jesus said, go, let it be done. Uh, for as you have believed, the servant was healed at that very moment. When you look at that in verse 10, it says, Jesus heard this and he marveled and he said, truly, I tell you, no one in Israel have I found such a faith as this man. And the way this story kind of describes it is it's talking about um, all of the, the sons and Isaac and Jacob and, and all of the recline. Um, but it, it doesn't matter what nationality that you are. Um, Jesus was impressed with this man's faith. And so Jesus simply told him he recognized that he appreciated it. Mm -hmm. And then he paid the compliment. And that's what we've got to do in our lives. We've got to recognize what others are doing. Uh, a lot of times we're so consumed with self. Um, you're having a conversation with someone and all you can think about is what you're going to say next rather than listening to them. And Chris uh, pointed that out, the gift of a listening ear. He, he, we talked about that a couple of weeks ago. But when, you're, when you recognize what someone's done and you want to show them that appreciation, that's when you pay the compliment. And that's what Jesus did there. Chris, do you have anything to add to that? Well, I was going to say this is a, a way, way smaller example and less important. But in a way, this validates your faith. It validates what you're doing. Um, I know a lot of times when, when we get beat down so much, we're living our faith and we get ridiculed and talked about. And, and <laughs> it's, it's just, it's good to have someone validate what you're doing. And I kind of compare that to... Uh, I, I have been approached by people in the restaurants when we used to go out to eat. <laughs> uh, like a world away. Free COVID in history. Uh, yeah. Uh, and, and, of course, we don't do it for any kind of recognition, but we would pray with the family before mm -hmm. we eat. And uh, I, we, we would routinely have someone come up to us and say, hey, we appreciate y'all praying, you know, before you ate. You know, you don't see that. And it kind of validates. And, and I know we don't need validation from people. But it just kind of it it kind of solidifies you're doing good and, and and just just imagine Jesus saying, "Man, your faith is greater than anybody as I've ever seen." That would have been, man, that would have been such a boost in faithful confidence. That would have been that would have been a great. It see. spurs you on and encourage you to yeah. keep going. The next example, it's very similar. It's it's one of uh, where Jesus pays the same compliment, the faith of the Canaanite woman. And this is in oh, yeah. Matthew chapter 15. Um, and when you look at that, uh, it, starting at verse 22, Canaanite woman from that region came out and was crying, have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely oppressed by a demon, <clears throat> but he did not answer her a word. His disciples came and begged him saying, send her away. She's crying out after us. She was kind of bothering them. 
He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep, the house of Israel. And she came and knelt before him saying, Lord, help me. And he answered, it is not right to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. She said, and she would have been the dogs that, that this is for because he came to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, not to the Canaanites. But she said, yes, Lord, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. She pauses in her life and, and recognizes that Jesus is master because she says from the master's table. Then Jesus answered her, O oh woman, great is your faith. It's done for you as you desire. And her daughter was healed instantly. Just the faith and to have Jesus validate that, that's just awesome. Uh, Jesus paid that compliment to, to both of these people because he recognized it, he acknowledged it, and then he gave the compliment. Uh, I think those two examples, there's many other of Jesus, but hey, if Jesus can, can compliment people, we can as well. You know, and the thing about Jesus is it was sincere. He's not just going to hand out a compliment like that and it not be for real sincere. You know, another example is Paul in Scripture. Paul was not afraid to tell folks how it was and, and, and how it needed to be. Uh, you think about the Corinthian church and, you know, the warning that he gave the Corinthian church. But also he wasn't afraid to give a compliment where compliment was needed. You might think of Timothy. Uh, Timothy is described in Scripture as a younger preacher, younger probably in his 30s or 40s at this time, but he was relatively young compared to those folks that he would be ministering to. And I can just imagine uh, as you and I are younger ministers that we're ministering to older folks that it can get, uh, for Timothy especially, it was very daunting, very uh, scary, very intimidating at times. And uh, he would need some encouragement, and Paul would give that to Timothy. Um, and I think of Second Timothy chapter one, uh, there beginning in verse, uh, we'll, we'll beginning verse three, because this is Paul's uh, letter to Timothy. He says, "I thank God, whom I serve with a pure conscience, as my forefathers did, as without ceasing I remember you in my prayers night and day." That would be uh, awesome to hear from the apostle Paul. Um, out of all of the people that uh, he was concerned for and I remember the church and all the things that he had suffered, uh, he tells Timothy, I remember you uh, night and day in my prayers. It was just like uh, Paul would roll down his list of people he prayed for. Uh, there's no greater compliment, I think, Matt, that you can receive than to hear someone say, you know, I've prayed for you or I'm praying for you. Uh, to know that God is hearing my name from other people and they're praying for me man what a great compliment that is he says in verse 4 greatly desiring to see you being mindful of your tears that i may be filled with joy when i call to remembrance the genuine faith that is in you which dwelt first in your grandmother lois and in your mother eunice and i am persuaded is in you also therefore i remind you stir up the gift of god which is in you through the laying on of my hands for god has not given us a spirit of fear but of power and of love and of a sound mind i love this because again paul uh imitating christ following the example of jesus would would compliment timothy in his faith and again validate uh, his faith validate who he was and what he was doing and who he was working for and why he was doing this and and this would have been such a great boost a, a shot in the arm so to speak uh, for someone like Timothy I I know I'm 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 always encouraged when an older member and when I say older more mature in the faith someone has been Christian for a very very long time I'm always encouraged when uh, they uh, compliment a sermon or you know they tell me they appreciate what I'm doing you know because I know it's sincere I know they're not just giving lip service I know they're not just kind of just throwing words out there um, but I also in the same vein appreciate their friendly criticism uh, and I say friendly because uh, when it's done in in those terms they're trying to help me grow and, and I love, and that's a compliment in all in itself. When, when someone lovingly uh, tries to help you grow, that's a compliment because they want to see you get better. They want to see you grow uh, stronger in the faith. They, they want to see you grow stronger in the word. And I, and I appreciate all that uh, accountability uh, that I can get. Um, again, in Philippians 2 and verse 20, Paul talks about Timothy. And he says, 
Uh, I have no one as like-minded as he is who will uh, sincerely care for your state. Uh, for they all seek their own, not the things which are, are, are Christ Jesus. You know, Timothy uh, was a man who sought the things of God. He, he sincerely um, concentrated on things above and not on things of this earth. And that's why Paul reminds him to be an example in faith and love and purity and all that good stuff to all the members of the church because they would be looking to him as an example. And, um, and, and in a living a Christian life can seem like perhaps, and I've, I've heard it put like, we live in a glass house or we live in a fishbowl. Everybody always is watching you and everybody's always critiquing you and everybody's just, you know, it would it's so encouraging to, to, to hear people being appreciative of your good work instead of trying to tear it down as a Christian. Uh, and, and I say all that, and, and I'll say this though, we don't do good to impress men. Uh, we do good because we are people who are supposed to do good, just for the sake of doing good, just for the sake of being faithful. We're faithful. We're holy, simply because he is holy. And, uh, you know, God is, is who we're trying uh, to impress here. Uh, but it, it, there's just, there's that human element. And I don't think anyone can really deny it. Um, I, I don't take compliments well because it's, it's always an awkward, uh, awkward thing with me. And, and, and I, and I love the compliments. It's just, it's, it, I don't know. And so, um, but even saying that, I think we, I think we need yes. desire that kind of uh, positive interaction. Uh, just, just being, being with others is part of that. And that's something we miss, you know, in the pandemic world we live in Oh yeah, um, and that encouragement. So that was uh, Jesus paid compliments. Paul in that, I guess, mentor relationship um, mm -hmm. with Timothy was sure to compliment uh, him. And, and Chris, I know you can probably think back to, uh, you know, some of the first sermons you ever preached um, in front of people. And, you know, people, I, I know when I first started being young um, as, a, as a kid, you know, I probably didn't do a whole lot of things right. Mm -hmm. But someone would compliment, you know, they might just say, hey, well, you look nice tonight up there, <laughs> if there was nothing else. Uh, but just something like that. And I remember that. And still to this day, uh, when, I, when I speak at places, uh, you know, people will, will say, you know, you know, you've grown so much. Or, you know, I can tell you're still working on these things. And, and you know, they mean it. And it's sincere. And, and if, if, you know, your sincere compliment is, hey, work on this, you're doing this great, but work on this. And if that's how it comes across, that's fine. I'm going to take the good, um, you know, all of it. But uh, I and think one, those are some great examples. One of my favorites is, uh, and I've been in full-time ministry for, I don't know, real close to 20 years, I guess 17 years, 18 years. And mm -hmm. uh, my favorite is, man, you're going to be, you're going to be a good preacher one day. <laughs> one day you're going to grow into a good preacher. <laughs> And I always say, well, that's the plan. I'm working on it. So. <laughs> it is. Um, and, and they don't necessarily, I mean, that can be taken so many different ways. Um, but, uh, but we all are growing. Um, Chris, when I think of, of compliment and encouragement, uh, Barnabas is probably one of the ones that comes to just top of the list. Sure. Uh, and when I think of that encouragement, uh, I, it always takes me back to if, if, if you've never been, uh, everybody watching it, if you've never been to a cross country race, um, where they run <laughs> cross country, uh, I know what you're going to say. there, there was, there's recently been a, um, a movie, um, and it was the same, uh, media people, um, that have done several really good movies out of Georgia, um, facing the giants and, um, fireproof and, and some of those, uh, movies uh like that and i can't remember the name of the movie but the little girl runs cross country and it's it's really good um we'll we'll think of the name later but anyways at a cross country meet all the runners start out and then parents and coaches and i was there randomly um years ago uh, they just set up along this and these people are running you know three miles or five miles or six miles that shows you how much i know about cross country um and when they don't when they think they can't do it anymore and they're going up the hills and around and this and that. 
and then they, they turn a bend and then they see their coach or they see their mom or they see their, their aunt or whoever it is, their friends. And these people are just yelling like crazy. They are going wild, encouraging them to keep running because it's not easy. Um, and, and that's the example we see in Hebrews of, of all the people that as we run this race, they're encouraging us. And that's, that's Barnabas. Um, the, Consequently, that, that movie is called Overcomer. Overcomer because she, she overcame and she was running. Um, but that, that encouragement and that, that comes from um, with Barnabas, if you'll open up to Acts chapter 11, um, that's where we see here uh, Barnabas kind of introduced um, and that is in Acts 11, starting at verse 21. The hand of the Lord was with them, and a great number who believed turned to the Lord. The report of this, of these people, these were people in, in Cyprus and Antioch, Cyrene, who were, who were being converted. And a great number who believed turned to the Lord. Verse 22. The report of this came to the ears of the church in Jerusalem. And they sent Barnabas to Antioch. And so Antioch needed someone there to kind of be uh, a hub, to kind of push them along. Uh, when he came and saw the grace of God, he was glad, and he built them up. He encouraged them all to remain faithful to the Lord with steadfast purpose, because he was a good man. He was full of Holy Spirit of faith, and a, and a great many people were added to the Lord. When you look at that, I think that explains how we can be encouragers. When you look at the son of encouragement, the son of building up, why was he like that? Because he was a good man full of the Holy Spirit. When we're full of God's Spirit, we want to build others up. We don't want to tear them down. Uh, Miss, Miss Vicki, um, Morrow, he, she does a great job teaching fifth grade, and one of the lessons and she does every year at the, at the start, uh, towards the start of the year, is a lesson of being a bucket filler. Um, and you don't want to drain other people's buckets. You want to fill those buckets up and, and fill them up with good things. Um, and that's what Barnabas does. Um, he just builds them up because he's full of the Spirit. He wants others to be full of the Spirit. And so it's just, he just can't control it. It just overflows and comes out of him. And, and that's, how, that's how compliments, that's how sincere compliments can help others. You know, they, that Miss Vicky have a thing in the room that says, "Be a fountain, not a drain." That's it. Be be a, be a fountain, and just uh, that that's so great. She and, and she is is awesome at that. She's an awesome encourager. Really uh, so many uh, so many are, and so Jesus complimented Paul, uh, kind of that mentor relationship. Barnabas, the son of encouragement, um, and then Chris, the expert on this last point here um, for our lesson. Uh, I, I, I looked at the points we were going to say, and I said, I, I'll let Chris, I'll let you have this last one. Uh, I don't want to, I don't want to get in trouble, but hopefully I, I do a good job at this. What, eating pizza? Is that the, is that my yeah, last point? <laughs> um, uh, complimenting your spouse. Um, I don't know anything that goes further in a marriage than sincere compliments to your spouse. Um, those are the things that are remembered when the big acts are, are not. Um, and it's just like, well, I think of my children too. Um, it's the small things that, that matter the most. Uh, and I think complimenting our spouses and, and sincerely meaning it because people are not stupid, especially those who know us the most. And the, they right. know when we're trying to get out of trouble or when we sincerely mean uh, what we are saying. Um, and the Bible talks a lot about spouses and how we are to interact with one another. Uh, the book of um, the book of First Peter, Peter says in chapter 3, verse 7, that husbands uh, are to dwell with their wives with understanding, giving honor to their wife. And, and I love this word honor. Um, because it's found a lot in scripture and part of this word honor is simply taking the time out to uh, uh, to honor someone it, that's what the word talks about is it's um, and it can be just taking your time taking your words uh, to say something like hey that was a that was a great meal or or hey uh, you know you look you look 
you know, exceptionally, exceptionally beautiful today. Uh, to, to know mine and Janice's relationship, I told, I told her just the other day, is like, hey, I don't have to eat ketchup on your food anymore. <laughs> and of course, that's an inside joke that goes way back to a, a marriage retreat that we went on and, and we were playing a newlywed game. But uh, little, little compliments go a long way. And I can't tell you, Matt, the amount of people that I've talked to that, that don't have good things to say about their wives. Um, and I really think that's a, a detriment. Even if, if, if something that your wife does bothers you, just kind of keep that to, between you and God and, and work on it between you and your spouse. And, and, and something that I've learned through the years is the, the more you talk negatively about it, uh, the worse the problem grows or the worse you think it is. It may not even be a problem, but you think it is. And the more you talk about it, uh, the worse that it'll, that'll get. So, I mean, if you do have an issue, talk with it about, talk about it with your spouse instead of, you know, dogging them to someone else. But uh, you, you think of Proverbs 31 and it talks about, you know, the virtuous woman. It talks about uh, almost we would say the the perfect woman. We would talk about this at, at weddings, and we talk about this at at, at um, uh, graceful women's funerals. Folks who have lived um, a, a blessed life. She watches over the ways of her uh, household. She does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children rise up and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praises her. Many daughters have done well, but you excel them all. Charm is deceitful and beauty is passing. And I, and I love the idea that, that the husband praises her. Um, I don't think we can fully understand, explain, comprehend the way or why God set things up the way he did for the man to be the stronger of the relationship, the, the woman to be the weaker vessel. Uh, but that does not mean weaker minded. It does not mean weaker in faith. It does not mean weaker in, in life. Uh, it just means that man was placed over woman for a specific reason that, that God saw fit. Uh, but how blessed is it when we give our spouses the praise that, that they deserve? I've I done. You, I've I'm, done a, you know, I'm a lot more comfortable, Chris, when someone comes to me and talks about how much they appreciate their spouse and how great they are for their spouse than when someone comes to me and complains about their spouse because <laughs> yeah. I think yeah you need to talk to them about it I'm confused about how I'm supposed to help the situation right because because that's, that's not my experience in life um Janice um you know through the years and some of the things that we've done with foster care um S S Hubert Powell one time called her superwoman and uh, I've held on to that a lot because you know she 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 is she is a superwoman. She does way more than probably I even give her credit for. But just think about just think about the last in in, a, in husbands and wives. I'm talking to you now. If you're married, think about the last positive thing that you said to your spouse, and think about the last negative thing that you said to your spouse. Which of those occurred last? The negative or positive? And as you think about those, I want you to think about the result of the negative comment and the result of the positive comment. Uh, the sincere, I'm really trying to build you up and, and, and make good things in our marriage. Look at, look at the differences. And it, it makes no sense to me why we wouldn't look for the good and compliment the good and, and compliment the, the positive. And so just build on those experiences. Um, you did a good job. Supper was good. You know, that was a wonderful meal. You know, thanks for, you know, working so hard to provide for your family. You know, thanks for always taking care of the family. Thanks for, you know, always considering us first. You know, just, and you, we can find these things and, and it would benefit our marriage so much. And, and with, with children, um, we've seen lots of children and perhaps you have too, Matt, being in a teaching position. Uh, you can tell which children get positive, they, they get a positive uh, feedback from parents and those who don't. Um, Absolutely. I, just, I can't imagine some of the situations, some of the kids that we've, that both of us, we, we have known just 
the home life of never hearing anything positive and uplifting from parents, uh, it really it really goes a long way in the attitude and the personality and the future of a child. I think so too. Uh, just all of our relationships, you know, with with kids, with our spouses, um, in workplaces, at our congregation, with with everyone, uh, at a fast food restaurant drive through, um, you know, just focusing on the, on the positive and, and complimenting them. Uh, that's the example that we had. That's the example Jesus had, Paul, Barnabas, um, that we're commanded to. We're commanded to build up, not to tear down. Yeah. And, and look for those opportunities. Um, uh, I heard a person once say, be truth seekers, not fault finders. <laughs> you know, look, look for the good and compliment the good and highlight the good um, you don't ignore the, the negative if it's especially if it's a detriment to life or marriage or relationship. You don't you don't ignore the negative, but you you accentuate the positive and and, and build on that foundation. Uh, you have a whole lot less um, uh, you have a whole lot less to build on when you build on the negative, unless you you know as opposed to the positive. What else? What what are some some sincere compliments we've talked about? Um, uh, how we can compliment folks on their faith and how Jesus and Paul both did this and how uplifting and encouraging it was. Our, our families, uh, you mentioned strangers, you know, um, you never know what kind of day that waitress or that waiter has had or, you know, that person at the drive through You don't know if, you know, they left the house with an angry spouse or, you know, whatever. And, and then, they're not having a good day, and then you come by and you compliment them. Thank you for doing such a good job. You know, you never know what 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 our word and our smile and our compliment will do. I know, and it's it's so it's so difficult because just as you were just saying that, I'm I'm trying to just think about who we interact with in in the pandemic world of 2020, um, and I'm I'm just going through racking my brain at just thinking of compliments this past month and. Our uh, our mail lady, she she came up to the carport one day to to drop the mail off, um, and I told her I, said, I just appreciate so much because I don't see how y'all do it. Y'all work so much, um, and you know thank you so much. And and she said you're so welcome. And by the way, could you please fix your mailbox where it was? <laughs> but had I not mentioned anything. <laughs> not even felt comfortable enough with me and I know how to you know we all know how to fix your own where it'll close just right but but she mentioned that to me and we just had that kind of relationship and and those are it may be your male person I don't know we don't interact with a whole lot of people nowadays uh -huh. um find a way to compliment those that your paths cross and you know you will reap what you sow um and you don't do it for that reason, but it always comes back to bless you. It always comes back to bless you when you are kind to people, sincere, and you just, um, I, I can't tell you if, if, if the world could just learn to be kind and, and sincere to one another, how much a better place it would be. Um, you, you and your family are, uh, are a gift to us at Mars Hill, and I'm so glad that y'all are with us and, uh, I think I speak for you, Matt, when I say we are honored and very happy to be at Mars Hill with all you guys. And if you are looking for a new church home, if you're new to the area and you just happen to catch this uh, this devotional time together, uh, we'd love to talk with you. We'd love to talk uh, to you about the church. Um, uh, if if we're not a right fit for you, we know other churches that may be better fit for you in in. We just want you to be plugged in uh, somehow, but we'd love to have you visit with us at Mars Hill. Uh, kind of a little bit off of our normal routine right now with COVID, but I think a very wise decision uh, from our elders thus far since, uh, you know, it, the numbers keep rising. And uh, But 930, we'll have our drive-up service in the parking lot. We hope that you can come there or we will be live streamed via YouTube, uh, Facebook, if I remember. Sunday mornings post that uh, that link, uh, but it would it'll eventually get there at nine thirty. Matt, any closing words, comments, compliments? It's a gift that doesn't cost you anything. The gift of a sincere compliment. Try yep. to do that uh, before you go to bed tonight. Sincere compliment. 
Let's pray. God, we love you, and we thank you for this beautiful day that you've given us. We thank you for the ability, the opportunity that we have uh, to uplift and build up. And I pray, God, that we'll always look for those opportunities that 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 come along to, to help and to encourage and to and to to benefit others, God. Not just uh, so we'll look better, feel better about ourselves, Lord, but but because it's the right thing to do, God. We never know uh, what a word, what a smile, what a compliment will do, but we do pray that that we'll take every uh, blessing that you give us in those opportunities, God. We. We've mentioned so many that are sick, and we appreciate your health and healing, and we pray that extra measures of that health and healing will be on those sick folks. Uh, we do uh, ask you to continue to be with Jane and Wayne Scott in the passing the van and that whole family. And we just pray, God, that you'll be with our elders as they continue to um, um, lead this congregation. I pray that you'll be with the lost that by some means we can come in contact with those folks and I just show them your love. God, we thank you for the compliment that you have paid us by sending us Jesus, Lord, the, the greatest gift uh, that we could ever receive. It's in his name that we pray. Amen. Till next time, see you, Matt. See everybody.